This video will continue on discussing the superposition principle and showing how we can calculate the average value of various properties for a function which is a superposition of different eigenfunctions of the Hamiltonian. So we start off with a function f of x. We can represent that in direct notation as this ket vector f. We have a basis function n, which is psi n of x, the nth eigenfunction of our Hamiltonian. We have the bra vector m, which is psi m star of x, the mth eigenfunction of the Hamiltonian of its complex conjugate. We have the overlap integral of m and n, which is the integral over all real numbers, so negative infinity to infinity with respect to x, of psi m star psi n. So it's the overlap of the bra vector m and ket vector n, the bra ket. We have the integral of an expectation value, so m a n is the integral over all real numbers of psi m star a acting on psi n. So our Hamiltonian, or our Schrodinger equation, can be represented as follows. Our Hamiltonian operator acting on uh, psi n gives us the energy of that wave function times that eigenfunction, again, psi n. And there is a set of wave functions, or a set of eigenfunctions, psi n, which we can use to constitute any function f of x. So we can do that by making any possible wave function as a linear combination of our eigenfunctions. So we have a sum from n equals 1 to infinity of some coefficient, some scalar value. Could be a complex number in general, but usually we just do real numbers. Some scalar coefficient times that eigenfunction n sum over that value for all of the eigenfunctions. All right, so what is our average energy in this case? We know we can only measure the eigenvalues of these individual eigenfunctions, but what's the average value that we're going to measure? So that's this expectation value integral, FHF. So we can substitute in what our values are for F in terms of it being a superposition. So we'll have a sum from M equals 1 to infinity of CM star times bra vector m. Then we have the Hamiltonian operator acting on the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of the coefficient cn times eigenfunction n. All right, so we can bring these two sums together, factor out the things we can factor out. Uh, all these cm stars are constant coefficients. cn are constant coefficients. So we have sum from m equals 1 to infinity sum of n equals 1 to infinity, cm star cn, times the expectation inter value integral mhn. So mhn is hn acting on, or sorry, h acting on n. We know that h acting on n, n is an eigenfunction of h that gives the energy of n times n again. So now we have men, E is a constant, a constant energy value we can factor out. Now we have En times the overlap integral of m and n. Now these are both eigenfunctions of our Hamiltonian. Our Hamiltonian is a linear Hermitian operator. From previous videos we, just, we derived that for Hermitian operators our eigenfunctions are orthogonal to one another. So for the overlap of m and n if they are equal to one another, n, n, then they're normalized, so this is 1. If they're not equal to one another, then they're orthogonal, and this is 0. So that is represented by the Kronecker delta here, which is 1 when m equals n, and 0 when it does not. So now substituting this result in here, we have that our average energy, expectation value of energy, is a sum from m equals 1 to infinity, and n equals 1 to infinity. Cm star, Cn, energy of the nth eigenfunction, times Kronecker delta Mn. So if we sum, do this inner sum of n here, this delta Mn is going to be 0 for every value except where m equals n. 
So there's going to be one value in this inner loop where it's not equal to zero, and that's going to be where m equals n. So this cn is going to be an m, this en is going to be an m, and this chronic or delta is going to be a 1. Everywhere else is going to cancel out. So we get rid of that inner loop by doing a sum from m equals 1 to infinity, cm star cn times em. Now this is a scalar value, cm. So the complex conjugate of a scalar value times itself, if you have a real number, is just the number squared. But in general, if you have a complex number, that's represented as the magnitude of that number squared. So we have the average energy is a sum from m equals 1 to infinity of the magnitude of cm squared times the energy of the mth eigenfunction. So if cm equals 0 for an eigenfunction, then it doesn't contribute to this sum. The sum only gets added to whenever you have a non-zero value of the coefficient for that particular eigenfunction in our superposition. All right, now we know that the experimental energy, whatever value we actually measure, isn't going to be this average value. It's going to be sum of these ENs or these EMs. It's going to be one of these EM values for which CM is non-zero. So the, the expectation value here, if we do a sum, now if we just change these M's to N's, sum from N equals 1 of CN quantity, uh, CM magnitude squared times EN. This is also equal to, this looks like the formula for a weighted average. So we can say this is equal to the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of the probability of measuring en times the value of en. So pn is the probability that we're going to be measuring en in this, in this measurement. So this suggests, based off the form of this, that the probability that we measure our specific eigenfunction in the superposition, our eigenvalue of that eigenfunction, is proportional to cn squared. So cn star times cn, the complex conjugate times itself of its coefficient, tells us the probability that we're going to measure that particular eigenvalue. So now, if our eigenfunction is just all in, if our function is just one eigenfunction, there's a 100% probability we just measure the value of that function. If it's some combination, then we can compute the probability of them individually by looking at uh, these individual coefficients and seeing what, pro what they each sum up to. So there's one extra restriction here in that if we assume that all of these eigenfunctions are normalized to begin with, which we did in this derivation, we assume that they were orthonormal, equaling this chronic or delta here. So there's a 100% chance or a probability of one that all of our probabilities sum up to over all of the eigenfunctions. So the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of the probability of a given state has to be a 100% chance that it's in a certain state. So this is equal to a sum from n equals 1 to infinity of cn star cn. So our normalization constant for our entire function here, if we want this function to be normalized, is going to be 1 over the square root of the sum here for our normalization constant. And then this again I said is true if the overlap integral of all of our basis functions is equal to a chronic or delta. It is 1 if they're n equals m, they're normalized, and it is going to be 0 if they're not equal to one another, they are orthogonal. If that's both true, then we have said to have an orthonormal basis set.